Hello reformers and welcome back to Cal Radio 1417. Now when we left off we took a Nuzdak castle and uh, in a pretty, well I'm going to say it's a pretty thrilling move really because we are out here by ourselves and we are going to have a relatively difficult time. Maybe it's even not going to be that difficult because it is just the Kurgits. The Kurgits are not known for their siege taking abilities and let's face it that's good for us that's great you know the vages you know they are obviously nowhere to be seen at the moment and that is kind of bad and a bit annoying but it does give us some rather exciting defenses to participate in so let's see what we can do 88 against the enemy's 122 now obviously these guys are probably going to be, hmm, well, I'm, I'm probably going to say quite a few, oh, it's raining, this is actually bad for us, <laughs> this is actually bad for us, because you know why, yeah, it's because of the ranged units, the ranged units are going to be doing basically nothing, but thankfully I actually don't even have that many ranged units, I think I, I have none, actually, and I just realized that my battle size was a little bit too low so I had to change that up a little bit because obviously I'm playing different mods right now and usually what I like to do is if I'm playing something like mm, a world of ice and fire or Perizno or even Pendor if I'm playing any of those mods usually I like to turn down the battle size because even though I would love to be able to have battles with insane amounts and I'm talking about insane amounts of units here, you know, like 700 plus. I would love to be able to have units like that, well, version, units, battles like that. But it's just not viable for my, my current PC. I, I just can't handle it. I, well, I, I can, well, kind of, but uh, my PC is kind of old and uh, it's, it's not going to handle those things very well. As we've seen previously in A World of Ice and Fire, it has been kind of trying actually kind of trying because uh, the one time I attempted to raise up the battle size I was really excited about it because the the battles in that mod and it, well basically in, I, I would say in any mod field field battles are always going to be much more fun if you have more units to utilize and you know formations to do and all, all that sort of cool tactical stuff but Unfortunately, the one time I did it, I suffered extremely bad performance issues. And so, usually I have to play with about... It, it really depends on the mod, but usually I'll play with about... Mm, 250 to 350 battle size. And that's the thing. In this mod, I'm playing with about 150 because obviously I can only use the default size because otherwise I have to continually remember to change the battle size and everything and obviously in those other mods it's very bad oh it's very bad if I forget to do that because that means instant instant crash basically so yeah definitely gonna have to be more aware of what's going on there but thankfully we now have 150 and that I think that's perfectly fine for Cal Radio 1417 because generally we are going to be facing units that are well, not exactly fantastic, and, uh, well, I, I have seen a number of custom armors and things like that that actually does make a, uh, a, a little bit of a difference to my performance, and uh, it does give me a, a little bit of stuttering sometimes, so I, I don't think you can see it, because, uh, well, I'm recording at 30 FPS, but, you know, it's uh, it's just how it is, unfortunately. Anyway, we actually took no casualties. I'm really surprised by this. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't be really, because they only had one Kurgit Lancer, as you can see. We gained 19 Renown, which is really good. And uh, we gained a little bit of Relation as well. Alright, so, unfortunately, I still have not sold any of my prisoners here. Technically, what I could do is I could swap them out and everything, but personally, I don't really want to do that right now. And instead, I'm just going to allow my forces just to perform some upgrading and see what they're capable of doing uh, I'm, I'm they seem, yeah someone actually mentioned in the comments that the auto upgrading system is a little bit weird sometimes sometimes it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and it just swaps things around and sometimes doesn't even do what it's meant to do sometimes so 
yeah, we got to keep a little bit of an eye on that. But personally, I feel like we're going to be pretty fine because as you can see, most of our companions actually have some good gear. They're actually running around with some, well, better than average, I would say. Better than average gear. And uh, yeah, speaking of other series, basically, I am pretty terrible at upgrading my companions. Generally, I tend to just leave them to their own devices if there is an automatic upgrading system or something like that, I will generally just relax and I'll just leave them to pick up their own gear. And uh, it's actually kind of fun to see what they pick up and to see what they deem, you know, useful for their own means instead of me giving them something. But obviously sometimes that really does result in a little bit less, less good companions. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look at that in the future and make sure that everyone is uh, pretty happy with what they get what, what they're getting should we say anyway uh Anostak castle seems to be pretty safe right now so we'll see if any other kurgits appear if they don't well then we'll see uh we'll see who's gonna get ownership of it oh there's a peace agreement fantastic okay this is great this is really really good and that means we're getting right to rule and we will no longer be attacked by the Kurgits. So basically what I can do now is I can look at the faction relations. Okay, so we are at war against no one. Great. <laughs> I was actually I was actually thinking to myself, mm, who's our next target? You know, I'm hungry for the fight. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So I, I guess I can actually just leave and I'm going to go over to Halmar. I'm going to say hi to these guys because... Um, they pose no threat to me. Well, they didn't pose a threat to me beforehand anyway. Oh, it's getting dangerous. It's getting dangerous. You know you know what happens if you've been on my channel a while, then you will know that I, uh, well, shall we say, that characters in my series tend to get very, very, shall we say, precariously close to death as soon as I become a little bit too confident, shall we say. So, if someone becomes confident, like I am right now, and <laughs> uh, Izini is not going to be too pleased. She is not going to be too pleased. Not not at all. Anyway, uh, I do have a, quite a lot of money, so I was thinking of hiring these hired blades, but I'm, I'm kind of not wanting to do that. RT Manor is actually in there. I know that he's in there, but not a big fan. Uh, of taking him because I think that we do have someone that doesn't like him so to speak so actually I want to keep that horse being able to move around just that little bit faster on the map is pretty good sell this sell that keep the lance just in case I'm actually going to buy a little bit of food make sure I'm okay let's buy some grapes as well just to make sure that we have a little bit of variety just a little bit you know not too much obviously otherwise uh, I think what we're going to do now is we are going to try... Oh! Oh, look at this! Okay, so Prince Yaroglek actually appears to be quite a fair liege because he's actually deciding to give this to us. And bear in mind that because the, you know, the sexism level is on the default for Warband, we are, we are still being given this honor. So he seems like a pretty fair guy for the most part. But obviously we don't know how he is after we have been given other fiefs. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm actually going to be taking that. There we go. We've taken ownership of this. You know what? I'm actually not even a big fan of taking this, to be honest, because that means I'll have to defend it. And that's kind of annoying. <laughs> because, as you can see, there's 23. Oh, no. That's really bad. Okay. Well, what we could do is we could build a blacksmith forge. That's going to take 5,400. As you can see, it does refill your troops' ammo, which is actually pretty good. But it is extremely expensive. Prisoner Tower Messenger Post would be pretty useful as well. I actually want to go into the Lord's Hall here because I'm thinking that we might... Uh, I don't think we have access to a constable or anything like that because that's usually what a liege of a, of a faction gives to you. Ah, this is the sister of Boyar Krahask. Aha. Uh -huh. I am sister to Boyar Krahask. Well, actually, you're, you're, you're my sister as well now, but apparently she doesn't care about that. Well, 
Yes. <laughs> it's probably about time that we get out of here then. Okay, look at this. Oh, look at that. Nice. We're getting some rents from a Nuzdak castle now. That's really cool. Okay, so now that's obviously making things much, much easier for us because a Nuzdak castle is, uh, well, basically has no garrison. So it is obviously pretty cheap to get that money. Oh, there's Ferentis. Ferentis has come back. That's pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell Borcha to do the same thing. He's going to go off as well and just do do that. We're just going to work through all of our companion list and we're going to see if we can gain some good right to rule. Now, where to go? Where to go? That is the question that we should be asking ourselves now because you can see here the Vagiers have... Hmm, Pretty reasonable territory, nothing really to write home about for the most part, and they have just made a truce with the Kurgids. So technically we will be unable to do that much. Ooh, I actually have a much larger, oh yeah, much larger company size now. Ah, you know what that means. Yes, you know what that means. I need to find the recruiter guy, so I'm actually going to see if we can go into the tavern here. And uh, we're going to try and see if I can maybe find... Oh, there's Bunduk. I like Bunduk. I'm actually going to get him. Uh, seems like there's no traveler here. All right, well, I'm going to have to find the recruiter. And hopefully I will be able to recruit a whole bunch of Nordhuskals and Swadian knights. Now, I was pretty lucky with finding the recruiter. He was actually in Ikemur, of all places. So it was pretty close by. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do something very cheeky. We're going to do something that I probably wouldn't recommend doing for the most part, but I kind of want to really badly, so that's the reason why we're doing it. Anyway, we're going to be attacking this patrol here, and uh, mm, yeah, I thought that might happen. I thought that might happen. All right, so unfortunately, patrols do not decrease the relation with the particular faction. So I'm hopeful that I will be able to catch up to these village farmers. No, of course, of course. All right, oh, there we go, there we go. All right, we'll see how poor you are after I take what you've got. There we go, fantastic. All right, so we now, we now have a little bit of deterioration in the uh, relations. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take Halmar right now. We're gonna take this. And we are going to try our hardest eight hours remaining. Now, bear in mind, I found the recruiter. You know what I did there? I spent, I think it is about 9,000. Yeah, I spent 9,000 on, I think it was, how much was it now? 30? I think I, I think I got 30 Nord Huskals. And this is exactly the reason why. All right, let's do this. We are outnumbered. We are outgunned, surely, as you can see, by the battle advantage, minus five. But we have huge amounts of Nordhuskals, and these guys are the best. They are the best in the game. So these guys are going to prove themselves in a trial by fire, basically. And I'm also going to prove myself, even though I don't actually have that much HP, which is really bad. But yeah, let's have a look and see whether I can do something here. I'm hopeful that we will be able to. I really, really want to have some kind of trait that gives me the ability to scare people away or whatever the case, you know, maybe heal people or something. But yes, unfortunately, we don't have that here. And I will I just have to try my best with my own, you know, Mortal Kombat skills, even though I'm absolutely terrible at Mortal Kombat, the game, that is. Anyway, let's see if I can do something here. I do have a shield, so I might as well use it just a little bit. There we go. Okay, fantastic. This is actually very good. I was actually wanting to murder that guy from behind. <laughs> yes, very good. Murder him from behind. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, I love... Oh, I love the custom animations. The custom animations are really, really fun to use. They really are. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now, bear in mind that uh, if you are... You know, if you are playing this game... <laughs> playing this mod, should I say then uh, and you're receiving bugs and error messages and things like that then you need to launch it with warband script enhancer and it comes with the mod as far as i'm aware or actually you can just download it from the uh, tailworld forums and it's easy enough 
it's easy enough to install. I actually have a video on my channel about uh, installing WSC. So if you go on my channel and just use the search function, you know, put in WSC or something like that, you'll probably find it. And uh, hopefully that will help you out because I've seen a number of comments that have been uh, basically saying that you're having some problems with uh, the installation of this mod. So hopefully that will shed some light on it. And um, who knows, maybe if you leave a, a comment, maybe someone will help you out. Maybe I'll help you out dependent on, uh, you know, if I see it, you know, I, I mean, I obviously see every comment, but I'm, I'm just saying like, you know, there are, uh, there are those times when I'm actually not online, <laughs> you know, I'm not there all the time, even though it may seem, it may seem like I'm always there. Oh yes. Always watching from the bushes. That's why everyone calls me, Hey, you, you in the bushes. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, that's a, that's a very old joke. Very old joke from, uh, I believe, The Simpsons. I believe so. I believe it is. Wasn't it, wasn't it Moe or something? Moe was uh, recounting a tale where he's, where he's always, uh, where, where he's just like, oh, I always, uh, no one, no one ever really knew my name. Everyone always called me, hey, you there in the bushes or something like that. I, I'm, I'm maybe not recounting it as accurately as it may, may need to be recounted but still you get the gist of it anyway point is uh oh oh we are oh oh this is oh, oh, okay be a bit careful be a bit careful thanks very much now bear in mind the main problem with what i'm doing here is that i am actually not killing people and uh, you may be you may be saying to yourself well well, well you you are you, you know you are knocking them unconscious but yeah that's the problem knocking them unconscious is not going to give me a uh very easy time if we are going to go for the war of attrition style and that's the reason why I'm trying not to do that I am trying to stay alive I am trying to uh, get our people in to the battlements reasonably easily because if we don't then again we will have to do the war of attrition style and I really don't want to do that because we are knocking so many unconscious that are going to get up you know they're going to get up easily and then be able to fight again and that's not good so I think I'm actually going to jump out here, or am I? Oh, I can't. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I can't jump out here. There's an invisible wall. Yeah, there is actually an invisible wall, which is not very good, but that's fine. I don't mind as long as we uh, we survive that encounter. That's all. That's all very well and good. And I think I found a place where the AI leaves me alone. Is that not the case? No. No, no, that's not the case. Great. Or maybe it is. <gasps> yes, leave me alone. Yes, there we go. Okay, well, maybe maybe they don't. Uh, well, I can't jump out here, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to... Oh, okay. Phew, I'm actually pretty happy with this. Uh, please don't attack me. I I'll leave you alone. Deal? <laughs> yes, he was like, deal, deal. Let me Leave me alone. There we go. All right, so I'm going to get shot by this guy if I don't kill him. There we go. All right, so uh, yeah, I think what I want to do is uh, I want to go down those stairs over there if at all possible. So let me see if I can actually do that. Oh, this is going to be problematic. Yes, kill that guy. There we go. All right, so my Nord Huskars are actually doing a fantastic job as you would expect. And this is exactly the reason why I feel like this mod has done a fantastic job with knowing what to include. And that's the thing. Being a mod creator is a hard job. It's a thankless job, and it's certainly one of those things that I could never do. I'm just, I, I can't, I don't, I don't know coding, you know, I don't know coding, and I, I, I don't even know the process behind creating mods. But, if you think about the temptation that, that mod creators have, and sometimes, you know, sometimes they succumb to this, and I'm getting to the, to the reason why I think that it's, you know, it's uh, it's a, it's a good balance that this particular mod creator has because what they've done is they've only included the most essential and desirable features. And I'm talking about freelancer. I'm talking about diplomacy. I'm talking about the the fact that you can recruit units from that guy. You know, recruiter Dunga or whatever his name is, and uh, you know things like that because. If you don't include those things, or, or shall we say, if you include those, but then decide to include everything else under the sun, 
you're going to make the mod unstable, you're going to make it imbalanced and, and all that sort of thing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that including everything is a bad thing, I'm just saying that sometimes it can become a little too much, if you know what I mean. And I'm not even talking about anything in particular here, I'm just saying that people sometimes get carried away because they want to do the best job they can, and, and you know, I understand that, no problem, I understand that. But sometimes you just got to rein it back a little bit and you just got to, you know, focus on the areas that you really, really want to be extremely good. And I feel like this mod has done that. And yeah, you know, it's not the most difficult mod, as you can see. I mean, I feel like this mod is one of those mods that you definitely want to play in a uh, maybe like maybe just after completing native, because if you complete native, and you want a slightly more difficult and, shall we say, more in-depth experience. But you don't want to play Nova Aetis, because if you play Nova Aetis, you're going to have... Well, you're going to have a fun time, because that's just, you know, the, the good mods always give you fun, but Nova Aetis is very in-depth, and it could get overwhelming for the, you know, newer player. I mean, it's overwhelming for me, even. But the point is, having the ability to just rein yourself back and choose exactly what you want to put into your mod and doing it well, that's exactly what this mod creator understands. And that's, that's really cool. I like that. And now, on the other hand, you have mods like Paradigm Worlds. And uh, if, you have, if you don't know Paradigm Worlds, I have, a, I have a couple of videos actually on the channel that are focusing on that mod. And I'd highly recommend checking that, uh, checking out that video. And uh, it is just insane. <laughs> it is probably the most insane mod that I have ever seen, and for good reason. And you'll see exactly what what that means if you watch it. If you don't, then well, you're missing out. But maybe you even want to download it. Who knows? But it's it's a crazy mod, and it's fantastic in that way. It, it's just there's just so much stuff in that mod, and that's the point. It's either, it's one or the other, you know, it's either, you know, mod does something really, really well and focuses on those particular things, or it just chucks absolutely everything in, creativity just f flowing like no one's business, and then you have Paradigm Worlds, which is a, a, an amazing creation, but wow, there's a lot in it. There is a lot in it. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I think we're done here. That is pretty amazing, if I do say so myself, that we were able to take Halmar so incredibly easily and you know I'm actually hmm I'm not entirely sure what I should do here to be honest I'm thinking to myself should I request it or should I award it to our husband I think I'm going to select my husband again and see if Prince Yaroglek is as fair as we think because you never know, maybe he's going to uh, give it to someone else, and in which case I will not be too pleased because we did all the work, but it is pretty amazing to have the option, I suppose. And now bear in mind that because we are a part of the Vagias, we are not going to be attacked. They, they, they can attack me personally, but they cannot attack Halmar. So this is exactly the tactic that I wanted to use against you know, the Nords or the Swadians or something like that. But then I thought to myself, well, why stop at Anuzdat Castle? Let's just take Halmar. And we could also take Ahun Castle and Nara and Malia Castle. All these things. Obviously, bear in mind, Malia Castle is a siege tower. So obviously that's going to be a little bit too much. You know, a little bit too much. But for the most part, I think, uh, I think we're going to be in a, a decent situation here because we're not going to be attacked, as I say. Anyway, I can level up a couple of my people here, get a couple more Swedian Knights. Now, as you can see, I actually have 56 Nord Huskals, and that was what I was talking about when we were speaking about, you know, mod balance and all that stuff, and why this mod might be a little easier than, say, Pendor or Perizno or something like that, because obviously this is a native expansion mod. It's meant to be, you know, a little easier than those. If you have money in this, if you have money and army size in this mod, you're going to be absolutely fine because you can recruit from Recruiter Dunga 
you can get a whole bunch of Nord Huskars or Swadian Knights or whatever whatever unit you want. You could run around with huge amounts of Vagia Marksmen or something like that. And then you'll have a pretty fun time. But anyway, we're going to wait here for some time. And uh, maybe I'll actually try and take Ahun Castle as well. Because we are here and we might as well. And, uh, ah, I actually, hmm, I have, I have prisoners, but do I really care about those? Oh, this is a siege tower? Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, you can tell I'm really pleased about siege towers. Yeah, I really don't want to do that. So, you know what we're going to do? I'm actually going to go over to Nara and see if I can take this, because this is going to be a ladder. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so if we are able to take Nara as well, then, well, I... I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay, so we are actually getting a Chamberlain. That's pretty nice. And Swadia has declared war against the Rodox as well. All right. So let's see. Uh, what what can I what can I do here? Uh, I'd actually like to wait until daytime, if at all possible, because the nighttime, according to some of you, is basically well. You can't actually see at night time, apparently. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. You know, when it's in the the darkest times, it's very difficult to see. Obviously, uh, YouTube does tend to uh, darken videos just a little bit. So obviously, that makes it a bit difficult. Anyway, let's lead our soldiers in an assault in Nara and see what we can do here. Oh, what? Okay. Well, uh, uh, this is this is not really good. This is not really good. I'm actually unsure. Where are the ladder? What? The ladder is all the way over there? Why? Why? Why do this to me, game? Why do this to me? Oh well, never mind. Okay. Uh, kind of wish I... I don't even know. I kind of wish I had a horse right now, but they're not going to allow that in a siege, obviously. But, uh, oh well. <laughs> this is... This is interesting. Okay, well, we have our camp. Oh, it's actually kind of cool that you have... You can see your camp right there. You can see the siege camp back there. That's pretty cool. Alright, so... Uh, I don't, I, I don't remember this, actually. I don't remember Nara being like this in, in the siege layout. So I, I guess we'll, we'll see if we're able to survive as we get closer to the walls. Now, uh, what's actually going on here? Because I'm thinking to myself, my people seem to be walking towards this gate. So I actually thought they might be attacking it to, uh, to get it down. I don't think this is destructible. No, it's not destructible. All right, well, that's fine. Mm, I was actually thinking that maybe what I could do is try and find the uh, gate mechanism. And maybe what I could do is try and uh, try and take that, if at all possible. Try and uh, interact with it. And uh, maybe we could uh, maybe we could open it up for our reinforcements. Although, saying that, I'm pretty sure we're not really going to have any problems with reinforcements. So, it might be the case that... Uh, Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, that is kind of harsh. All right. Well, we're going to see what we can do here then. This. What? They, they're all just they're all just standing there. They're all just standing there on the... Okay. We don't even... Well, well, we don't even need to really raise this gate now. Ouch. Got shot in the... What, what, what did I actually get shot in? Oh, the elbow? Are you serious? You see that? The elbow? Oh, wow. That's painful. That's got to hurt. I should know. I've been shot many times in the face. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You'd know that to look at me, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so anyway. We might have the opportunity to bash down that gate, but uh, I'm just going to allow my forces just to travel up the ladder there. I really do not want to get pincushioned by the huge amount of archers and everything. Is this destructible? No, it's not destructible. Okay, well, it's absolutely fine. I don't mind that. Hopefully my Huskars will be able to do a decent job here. Bear in mind, uh, I don't have... Uh, no, I don't have any ranged weapon at the moment. I think I... D don't I, I... No, that was in the... Mm, that was in Season 1. In Season 1 of Cal Radio 1417, I decided to build my character with a little, little bit of power draw. But, uh, yeah, in this one, not so much. Because I wanted to play more of a... Uh, more of a tanky berserker kind of character so you know obviously with my two-handed mace that kind of makes sense so yeah that's why I went with that anyway seems like my house cars are doing a fantastic job as as always you know I mean 
they are fantastic units. And uh, as far as I'm aware, I think I think I saw someone someone in a, in a comment actually say that the Huskals are, mm, I think, probably the only tier six unit in this mod. So if you are playing as the Nords and you level up a whole bunch of Nord Huskals, or you you know find recruiter Dunga and you get a whole bunch of them, you're going to be in a really fantastic position, like I am right here. You know, I mean, we're we're doing pretty well. And we've already eliminated 70... Wow. Okay. I'm actually... Well, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, to be honest. I mean, these are Kurgits. Kurgits are the worst in terms of siege defense. Hmm. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a question here. For those of you that are still watching. What do you think in terms of power of factions... Now, I'm, I'm talking about in sieges here, of course. But I, w I would definitely say that Nords are the strongest and Kurgits are the weakest. But what about the others? Because obviously you go to... Th oh, no, actually, Rodox. Hmm. Oh, well, maybe... maybe you know what? We, we should probably uh, separate it into defense and offense because obviously offense... Personally, I would say that, that Nords are probably the best because they can use their house cars. And they can just basically go in with huge armored walking tanks. And they can just murder everything. And then uh, on the defensive end, I would definitely say that Rodox are probably the best. Because they have those insane crossbowmen. Those Rodox sharpshooters. Those guys are really definitely something to be very worried about if you're going to be attacking the Rodox. And then, of course, they do have the Rodox Sergeants as well. And the Rodox Sergeants are really good at what they do. They're very defensive. They, uh, they make sure that their crossbowmen are safe. And, uh, and, then, and then on the other hand, who's, who's the worst at, uh, at offense in sieges? Well, Kurgits, right? <laughs> Kurgits, yeah. And, and how about defense? Kurgits, right? Yeah, it's probably... Uh, they're probably the worst in, in, in every in every category in sieges. But on the other hand, in field battles, Kurgits are probably the best. Because you got those you got those troublesome those troublesome horse archers. Those guys are just Wow. Infuriating. And uh, it's it's actually kind of amusing. My I'm I'm not gonna say hatred, because I have a respect for them. I you know, I have a respect for the horse archers. I I, I guess my Mm, what should we say? Impatience. It's more impatience more than more than hatred, really. My impatience with the with the Kurgid horse archers spans years because I uh, I obviously started playing Warband in uh, 2012, I think. That's a long time ago, and I believe I think it was I I can't remember the episode specifically, but I think it was like part. 30 something or 40 something I don't know it took me a long time to actually complete the original series of Warband because it was my first time playing the game basically I had no idea about anything I was you know I still don't some for the most part <laughs> I don't know, I'm just kidding kind of anyway point is it was part 30 something yeah as I say and I was fighting some horse archers and I thought to myself at the time what is going on with these guys? They're actually really, really good at what they do. And, and this is before I was playing any mods, by the way. I was playing native, so they didn't have the horse archer fix. You know, that horse archer fix that makes them even better. Yeah, those. So, yeah, that obviously, you know, basically started my whole impatience with, with the horse archers. And indeed, any class. So... If uh, any game in the future, and I'm talking about Mountain Blade game, if that has horse archers, which I'm sure it's going to, and if any faction has horse archers, I'm probably going to be either playing as that faction, because I don't want to fight against them, or eliminating them first, because I really do not want to fight, what, I don't know, huge armies of horse archers, especially with better AI. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine better AI with horse archers? I can't stand the thought. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding for the most part, but yeah, you get my meaning. So yeah, Kurgits, 
obviously kind of bad in every single siege offensive and defensive and then uh, well who else I don't know Vagia is pretty good at defense because they do have their Vagia marksman but the marksmen are not very good in melee combat so obviously if anyone gets into melee with them well they're kind of dead but uh, uh, yeah that's the reason why the Rodoks are a little bit a little bit a little bit easier to work with because their Rodok sharpshooters are actually pretty good in melee Anyway, it seems like someone is behind the wall over there. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm actually unsure why that even happened, because usually this kind of thing happens when you have a battle size that is higher than the default, because the game can't handle, you know, spawning in a bunch of units in the same area, so it generally tends to overflow in certain places. But uh, this is kind of a... Kind of a weird thing for me. Oh, it seems like that. Oh, okay, never mind. So this guy is actually just stuck behind these boxes. Are you serious? Get out of there! Come on now. Yeah, there we go. That's what you. You're gonna wake up with a headache. I'm terribly sorry. Let me go. Right. Maybe he's gonna get some paracetamol or something like that. Anyway, point is, I'm now stuck. Am I? No, I'm not stuck. Okay, fantastic. I see he's actually leveling up really, really quickly, and. Uh, I haven't actually modified the experience gain or anything like that. I usually don't do that unless I actually state that I'm going to do it. Um, and, and, you know, and obviously let you know about that. But anyway, there's 11 enemies remaining. Where are they? Well, that's great. Looks like my units cannot exit any further. And the enemy units are, well, on the other side of the ladder. So I guess my only option is to retreat, even though that really shouldn't have happened. I should have gained a huge amount of renown there, but it's okay. You will not come under attack if you leave this castle. There we go. You are my... <laughs> okay, that's kind of amusing. I actually thought to myself, oh, he's just going to escape, you know, because we're letting him go. No, I'm, I'm actually going to take him prisoner. I'm going to take him prisoner. Oh, yeah, you can bet it. You can bet that. Okay, so there we go. We're absolutely fine there. We took this without any problems, with the exception of, obviously, it having a bit of a problem there. Anyway, I'm actually going to request that Nara be awarded to me. And uh, then we're just gonna wait here for some time and uh, they can't do anything they can't do anything so I'm basically just roaming through their lands taking all of their stuff without them being able to retaliate because we are part of a faction that is at peace with them which is ludicrous absolutely crazy crazy anyway that will be it for this episode thank you for joining me thank you for watching and I will see you next time